All right. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Biz Talk Africa. Uh, I am Jason Schuster, your host, and I'm here today with Dr. Babatunde Obrima from, Ni- from uh, the FinTech Association of Nigeria. Really excited to have you here, doctor. Thank you for being here. And Thank you for also, having me. <laughs> as always, I have my wonderful co-host, Videa Mike. Videa, joining Hi, us from New York today, I think, right? Correct. Excellent. Excellent. Love it. I, I love the background. Very, very unique background today. Thank you. <laughs> I, I am actually in a very nice location. Um, it's an it's a incubator um, here on 39th Street um, near Times Square. Uh, the, the Olympics awesome. background. Well, <laughs> it, yeah, let's say it's um, for the Olympics. I like that. For the Olympics. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, uh, Dr. Babatunde, if you could, please introduce yourself to the audience. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your career up to this point, and then I would love it if you could tell us a little bit more about your organization and what they do. Okay, great. Thanks, Jason. Um, I currently work for FinTech Association of Nigeria as a Chief Operating Officer. Uh, prior to that, I worked briefly with a subsidiary of the Central Bank that looked okay. at the risking agricultural finance in Nigeria. And uh, prior to that, I had worked um, in the banking sector for about 20 years, um, working in different areas of banking, agri-finance, corporate banking, retail banking, consumer banking, uh, investment banking. So, I mean, uh, that was my background uh, in terms of uh, academic interest on my initial background academically is agriculture and then I went to business administration so that, that that's it about me and so talking about uh, the association fintech association of Nigeria is actually an ecosystem platform we used to we like to call ourselves a platform we currently have about 20 sectors of the economy represented in the association so although we use the, the word the word fintech is used but we're an ecosystem uh, platform. So we have members cutting across incumbent banks to fintechs, payment fintechs, lending fintechs, wealth tech, agri tech, insure tech, ed tech, health tech. Uh, we have the consulting firms. So the four major consulting firms are members, universities, media houses, um, law firms. Um, we have the, the ICT uh, sector so it's uh we have 20 different sectors represented currently in the in the in the association we currently have about 257 members um in, in the association so uh, we're driven by three objectives the first one is to connect be able to bring everybody within the tech space together that we can have that ecosystem where we can connect share ideas network and grow the fintech ecosystem in nigeria the second one is to accelerate technological growth in Nigeria. Uh, we do that through various capacity building initiatives um, they, they, because for, for, for us believe that for Africa, it's either we innovate or we die. I mean, and, and the platform is just right to do that. Uh, and then thirdly, to advocate uh, without progressive regulatory reforms, policies, everything about FinTech will, be, will, will not be productive. We need regulatory policies and frameworks that support creativity and innovation. So we, we advocate by talking to all the regulators. We currently have a forum which we started last year called the Regulator Forum. Regulator means regulators and innovators being able to come together to the table to, to discuss. That after forum meets on a quarterly basis because technology is always ahead of innovation. And the only way to bridge that gap is to engage. You know, and that's why that was the whole idea of that uh, regulator, regulator forum. And uh, we've intervened in various ways within the ecosystem. They, 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 it's a young ecosystem, I would say, so it's growing. I mean, they will have its own pitting problems, but we'll overcome them. And uh, Nigeria should be the destination place when it comes to fit tech. Do you know, I think it's refreshing what you're talking about, because, um, you know, you, you have the regulators, you have governments, um, which are so far behind where technology and innovation is going. Businesses are moving so much faster. 
than, than they can keep up with. And it's not an issue with the government or anything like that. It's just the protocol, the bureaucracy, um, but, but all moving parts. And organizations such as yourself, are, I see coming up more and more because there's a gap that needs to be filled where you need to sort of support these companies that move that, and, and as you said, create an ecosystem, right? Because there are many things in between that plug and play to make this grow that way they need it to go. But then you do need someone facing off with different parts to actually make the ecosystem work. So that's, t- tell us a little bit more about the other components and the other people who support in your organization. So w- what does the structure look like? So we have, um, we have a three-tier structure. We have the board of trustees of the association. Then we have a governing council. And then we have the executive management. So I mean, right. the, the, the management reports to the governing council and the governing council reports to the board of trustees. So you so have a have, nice governance framework in there that yes. sort of ensures, you know, everything works in accordance. And, and you know, What's great about it, as you, as you just sort of close in the last sentence, Nigeria becomes, you know, the heart and soul of fintech and the development. But, you know, putting in that, that level of um, corporate governance at the top gives, should give investors and should give people the comfort that, you know what, we want this to work. And we're ready to put the checks and balances to ensure that we have a strong ecosystem and supporting framework as well as, you know, the governance to make sure that, you know, people are held accountable because you do hear stories, don't you? Oh, def- definitely. So, I mean, um, while we, we're, we're not for profit organization, we're private sector driven, we're not backed by any act of government. So membership is voluntary. We cannot impose or compel members to comply, but within Despite that, we still try to create those frameworks and uh, environment to ensure that there's good governance. We, 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 for example, we say that, look, regulation is necessary. A, a financial system is as, stable, is as stable as the regulations that govern it. However, we need to define what should be, gov- what should be regulated, how should it be regulated, when should it be regulated, um, should fintechs be regulated like banks? So I mean, those are issues that that uh, that, 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 that that come up. So we believe in good governance, and we try to tell our members the need to actually ensure that they have good corporate structures, good governance. Indeed. It helps you, even it helps investors to look at you because they can see that there's a structure, a good structure in place. Exactly, and this is why such a, a some amazing companies and businesses don't don't get the funding. And it's not because their ideas are not good, but you can't get away from actually having a stable environment that people feel that their capital is safe. Definitely, definitely. And your banking um, experience and background, together harnessing your, your um, you know, initial skills in agriculture sort of blends so nicely, right? So, you know, you, you sort of understand where people are coming from. Um, oh. Sorry, I, I'm talking too much. I'm sort of like, okay, sorry, Jason. I, I warned you, Videa is very, very passionate about this subject in particular and in Africa. So she's... <laughs> I don't want to apologize for her because it's not bad. It's just, uh, uh, I, it, it's, it's fun. It's fun, sorry. <laughs> no, yes, it is. I, I was going to answer a response where I mean, it, it definitely works. So... So I mean, so with my, I'm a fintech enthusiast, and then I, and I believe that technology will solve a whole lot of issues. I'm one of those who think that the problem of food in Africa is not even mechanization; it's technology. I mean, take, take the Netherlands for example; they're one of the smallest countries, but they're one of the largest producers of food, and it's technology. So Africa needs to start uh, because population always grow faster than food production, but technology can help you to, to change that, uh, to, to, to increase production. So uh, I, it's, it's a huge challenge, I mean, because um, leadership needs to move from an analog mindset to a digital mindset for it to happen. And Absolutely. I think that's, that's, uh, that's a major challenge. 
simultaneous changes, not sequential. Many things can happen. So uh, once you have leaders, you're going to have these challenges. And I think it's also important for people to, and our viewers to sort of understand the definition of technology, right? Technology doesn't only mean your phone or whatever. Um, it is about new ways of doing things. It is hydroponic, aeroponics, all of those sort of stuff, vertical farming. Yeah. There, there's so many different ways in which you use new ways of doing things and embracing new ways of doing things. Having, you know, your crops and the food that you're growing, the seasonality, using greenhouses, using different mechanisms, that it's all replicatable. And once you have the conditions are right, you could grow anything. Yeah. You literally can grow anything. And with Africa, having abundance of land, of space, of um, you know, the right climate, et cetera, et cetera. It's like a giant greenhouse just waiting to be populated. You're right. <laughs> now, I, if, if it's okay, I'd like to come back to, to kind of the, the, the main topic for just a second. And I think that for our viewers, um, it might be really helpful to talk about what all goes into a fintech ecosystem. I think that most most of our viewers and most people who aren't really familiar with fintech maybe think that fintech is really just payment platforms, you know, or or digital banking. But that's not true, is it? It's a lot more than that. So, would you maybe take just a, a couple of minutes tell the audience a little bit about what what does a fintech ecosystem look like? What what are all the parts that go into that? So, I mean, our, our, our perspective of the fintech ecosystem is any process that's digitally or technologically enabled is fits into the fintech ecosystem. So, I mean, either you're doing agri tech or ed tech or in short tech, right? You're providing a service. Now, the, 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 so the flip side of it is this that whatever service you're providing, people have to pay. So a, a, a strong payment platform or foundation is critical for the survival, for the success of a fintech ecosystem. And that, that's why most people see it as payment, because I mean that right. payment is actually is foundational. I mean, because if people if you provide the service and the people cannot pay easily for it. Or conveniently for it, then 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 you, it's um, it becomes a challenge. So it, so payment is foundational, and uh, once you have the payments platform and structures well established, then all the other tech enabled uh, services can fit into in, into the into the puzzle, if I put it that way. So I mean, ed tech can come in, health tech can come in, insure tech can come in, wealth tech can come in, because at the end of the day, there has to be that exchange of pay and receive. And that's, that platform is extremely critical. So anything that's tech enabled that provides convenience for customers fits into the FinTech ecosystem. Okay, excellent. Now, sorry, that was my really basic, com my, my basic question. I'm, now I'll leave, I'll send it back over to Vidi for the for the more exciting questions. I just <laughs> I, I just I think it's important for 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 our audience to understand. Really, you know, fintech is just a lot more than just you know a payment platform or something like that, right? There's 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 so much more to it. Absolutely, and and you know, like I encourage everybody to check out you know fintechng.org, which is your website. And you know what I love on that, just going on it. Your first page, you have facilitate collaboration, acceleration, innovation, and, um, and policies reform. I mean, that kind of says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. So that, that, that ties into our three core objectives of connecting, accelerate, and advocate. So, I mean, in terms of connecting, it's been able to collaborate. Uh, in terms of uh, innovation fits into acceleration, you know, and uh, policy fits into the, fits into the advocacy uh, bit of it. I mean, you, so in terms of, maybe it's just a bit about advocacy. So we, in 2019, we, we started working with um, the Securities and Exchange Commission 
And um, that led to a committee set up and a document called the FinTech Roadmap for the Capital Market was established through a stakeholder um, committee that was set up to, to look at that. And we, we pride that as one of our biggest advocacy achievements. Out of that has come out the documents for blockchain um, in, a, for, for, in the capital, for, for, for the capital market, crowdfunding regulation, you know, um, we now have um, approved licenses being issued to digital brokers. So, I mean, you, there's a lot of, there's a lot happening. And right now, we are also, there's a committee the central bank just started to look at the FinTech roadmap for Nigeria, for which we are members of that committee. So, I mean, we, yeah, there, there's a lot happening within the, within the ecosystem. I mean, in terms of policy and how we can, uh, you, you can get it. I mean, when it comes to policy, I would say that you can't win all the time. I mean, regulators are regulators. There, there are things they share with you and there are things they don't share with you. So <laughs> Yeah, but you get it on their agenda, right? You get it on the roadmap. You, you start the process. You have the yeah. discussions. Yeah. And, and that's how it works over time. And you find that sometimes with policies, it, everybody's not on the same page because they all don't have the same understanding. Oh, definitely. And it takes a bit of education. It takes a bit of, you know, talking about it, refining what your offering is. And then eventually, if it's right, it happens. Yes, I mean it, it does. I mean, uh, you be. I mean, just just um, yeah. Yesterday there was a meeting yesterday, but they called by the Minister of Finance. So in February, when the central bank issued a circular on cryptocurrencies, we had written a position paper and sent to the central bank, the Security and Exchange Commission, the Minister of Finance, and the National Assembly. And based on that, we were invited on Thursday by the minister to, with a committee set up to discuss the issue of, um, of uh, cryptocurrencies and um, digital currency for Nigeria. So I I'm, volunteer my services on that. This is an area that I'm well <laughs> familiar with. Okay, so, I mean, there, there's a lot happening on that. Actually, though the central bank wants to introduce a digital currency by October. So I mean, this year, this year. So we've already we've, we've made wow. a presentation to them, and they've already done um, another presentation to the to the ecosystem, and um, they're they're open to 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 start the trials by October. So I mean, there's um, the regulators are also they're also shifting ground. <laughs> Might not be as fast as the fintech ecosystem wants, but I think there's a lot as happening in terms of regulation. I mean, they they've they've, they've moved. You know, which is quite encouraging. Okay. You know, I, I mean, <laughs> I think ever most people who are familiar with uh, working with government agencies, it, it's always slow, right? So honestly, the fact that they're that they are moving as fast as they are seems pretty impressive to me. Uh, I, I would imagine something like that would take much longer uh, under normal circumstances. So that's good that regulators are seeing the value and seeing the need to move forward a little faster. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, at least they 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 beginning to engage the ecosystem, which is which is which is good. So, fantastic, fantastic. Um, so I I have another question, and again, this is again maybe a little bit more basic, but you know, where what is what is your organization's goal for the next twelve to eighteen months? What what is it that that you guys would really love to accomplish in the next twelve to eighteen months? That would make a big impact. Okay, so um, I, I, I would um, want to be be able to see a situation where I mean, for us as um, to see Nigeria as a destination place for for fintech investments. Um, we and one of the things we plan to do. So October every year was I was in we have the Nigerian fintech week. This year, also from the 25th to the 29th of October, we actually showcase uh, some of the fintechs in Nigeria and what we're doing. And in the last last year, there was some partnership we had with the Singapore Fintech Festival. And uh, this year, 
the, the, the World FinTech Festival for Africa by SFF who host from Nigeria. So, Fantastic. I mean, so, um, so that one day event will be hosted right here and broadcast from Nigeria. So, I mean, for us, it's a way to be able to showcase FinTech in Nigeria and Africa to the rest of the world using the SSF, SFF platform. And uh, it's also, I mean, for the Nigerian FinTech, we were talking to the regulators, they should be part of it to let the world know how they're supporting the FinTech ecosystem to give investors more comfort. And we can see more investments come into the FinTech ecosystem. I mean, uh, this year alone, we've seen close to $400 million coming into the ecosystem despite COVID. Last year was $300 million. And I see this year closing at the rate at which we are going at close to $500 to $600 million. So, I mean, for me, the next 18 months, how do we get, uh, we already have two uh, unicorns, how do we have move unicorns from two to minimum five in the next 18 months? How do we increase investments into the fintech ecosystem from anticipated like $600 million this year to $1 billion? I think that will be something to uh, to look up for in the next 18 months. And it's not an unreasonable vision either. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, it's not unreasonable. Well, and I think it's, it, it's, it's interesting. I think a lot of people are starting to realize that Africa is a hub for fintech innovation. And a lot of that innovation is driven by need, right? Uh, because there, there is a, a great demand for fintech innovation in Africa. But to see, to see it being showcased in Nigeria like that, that's, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, if the investors, so for example, let's take InsurTech. Insurance penetration right. in Nigeria is just about 2% with the population of 200 million people. So that's a space where there's so much potentials and uh, opportunities. Make a note. For Make a note. Growth. Um, <laughs> we currently are close to... Go go ahead, uh, Baba Tunde. I think I think you cut out for a second there. Go. Yeah. Go. So we can, lost. Can you say bit. that again? Yeah. So um, I said that take insurtech, for example, uh, insurance penetration in Nigeria is just about two percent. So with a population of two hundred million people, that's a space where there's so much potential for growth and opportunity for for business. Um, for ed tech and agri tech and health tech, we're still scratching the surface. So, I mean, I think there's so much with 200 million people, you just can go wrong. I mean, the, the opportunities for growth within the FinTech ecosystem is, is huge. So, um, talk to us. There's big the opportunities in Nigeria. Beautifully said. So, for people out there looking, looking at this and thinking, you know what? We've got a startup. We've not really talked about you know, the African market or the Nigeria market. Are you saying you guys are opening your arms and saying, come into Nigeria is ecosystem. Join, become a member, and we will help you launch. Okay, so um, becoming a member helps you to be able to interact with the ecosystem and uh, to a platform to be able to, I mean, reach um, other stakeholders that are required. Um, also helps us to be able to advise you on, uh, in terms of what to do. So um, Nigeria is not yet, the regulation is not yet a one-stop shop. So, I mean, I mean there, there are platforms where you can practically do everything on the platform. You can, you can uh, do investments, you can do transfers, you can do lending. But in Nigeria, you don't, for, for regulation, you probably need three different licenses to be able to do those three functions, not just one license. So, in, so if you're coming in, we'll be able to advise you as to, as to what to do, you know, how to go about it. Uh, but but uh, we're, we're, um, Nigeria is open for, 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 for investors, I mean, for investments. <laughs> I'm on your site. I will become a member. 
very easy, <laughs> very easy to very actually easy. get set up. Very easy. <laughs> Beautiful. And I like the structure. I like, you know, the different sort of preferred plans and stuff like that you have here. But what I like, right? So, Jason, I just went into it. And when you scroll, the benefits, it's a long list of benefits. You know, like when you join uh, something, the membership is like four little things. You have this yeah. and this and this and this. Fantastic. It's very good value. But I think like people benefit so much from becoming a member with you guys. And, you know, you, you have this umbrella. You look after people and it's an ecosystem. You're joining a little family. Yes. I mean, we, we, we try our best. I mean, uh, as it grows, I mean, those challenges come. How do you satisfy 257 people? But then we try. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start somewhere, right? Um, and so I, I guess here's my last question. And this, this may also be a, a, a more on the simple side. But as far as your organization's focus, would you say that you're focused more about bringing bringing startups and investors to Nigeria or trying to bring startups and investors up from Nigeria. So if, the, if that makes sense, it's like bringing people into the ecosystem or trying to raise people up that are already in the ecosystem. What would you say is a bigger focus for your association? Well, the bigger focus is the latter. I mean, we need okay. to, but well, we're not adverse to the former. <laughs> okay. So that, I mean, it, it's able to grow the, the grow the ecosystem, grow 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 uh, the local fintech. I mean, being able to see um, our own startups become unicorns. You know, that's that, that that's the and to encourage more startups. I mean, the statistics we have shows that. So there are about two hundred and fifty active fintechs, but there are over three thousand startups. Wow. So, um, I mean, we'll, and we'll, we'll, they, 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 we can only see how we can, how they, they can be an enabling environment that supports uh, that. One of the big challenges for startups is actually funding. Um, the funding for pre-seed and seed in particular. So the typical Nigerian investor does not really invest in intellectual properties because um, it's not very clear, it's not very, it's not tangible. Technically, they would rather invest in real estate or in the stock in the stock market. But we're beginning to see changes with the, with the experiences people are seeing with Paystack, with Interswitch, with Flutterwave and CUDA. A lot of inquiries are beginning to come about investing in, 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 in FinTech. So we hope that within the next, like maybe one of the things we also want to see in the next 18 months is to see more local, investments in the fintech ecosystem as against direct uh, uh, foreign investments. Absolutely. Well, I think that that's, that shift over time will probably make the biggest difference more so than outside investment coming in because it's, it's, the, it's the community building itself up, right? Yes. It's Absolutely. Fantastic. fantastic. And yet there, Definitely. and there have been some very impressive fintechs coming out of Nigeria. So it's, this is just the beginning is my, my feeling in my chest is this is just the start. This is not, <laughs> hasn't even really started yet. Like I said, I mean, I, I, I see five unicorns by next year. So, I mean. Amazing, amazing. We're, we're pretty much right at time. Is there any just closing thoughts that you'd like to leave the audience with? And I, I would love to have you back on the show again, because I do feel like there's more that we could discuss, um, but we just, we only have 30 minutes, <laughs> but just any, any last thoughts that, that you want to leave the audience with? Oh, just that. I mean, visit our website, look at our calendars. You can always join our programs to know more about uh, the FinTech in Nigeria. First of all, we always hold uh, webinars monthly. The only one for August is on AgriTech how to scale using technology. So which holds on the 31st of this month. So feel free to join to know more about what's happening on the IDTech space. And maybe you might find some new investors coming to that space. Absolutely. Fantastic. Perfect. I love it. I love it. As always, Vidi, wonderful questions today. I couldn't do this without you. I oh, really couldn't. 
<laughs> Pleasure being here. Pleasure. <laughs> and and Dr. Babatunde, thank you for being here today. I really enjoyed this conversation. Really great content and really exciting to hear just what your organization is doing and, and how this ecosystem in Nigeria is growing. So I really appreciate you being here today and sharing that with us. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, BD. Nice speaking with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Until the next cool. time, one tribe. One tribe. One tribe. One tribe. All right. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Until next time. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.